SoCal College Sports presents the 3C2A Men's Volleyball Championships on the Bay Area Online Sports Network tonight. The Orange Coast College Pirates meet the Long Beach City College Vikings for the third time this season, but this time with a championship oh, on the line. Hello again, and we welcome you to El Camino College. Jeff's going up, Mike Cepeda with you uh, remotely here in the gym, but uh, Michael... Uh, great to have you here, and uh, we're very excited for tonight's matchup. The Pirates get here uh, with a semifinal win over Irvine Valley College in straight sets, and they did it the way that they have done it all year, and that is with a standout performance from their outstanding sophomore, Will Anderson. That's exactly right. Anderson, absolute stud on Thursday. Uh, really doing it at every facet of the game. Very dynamic in the front and the back row. You see it here. You know, it's just, it's a, it's a nice luxury to have if you're Coach Travis Turner to have him in front and back row. And that type of hitting ability, uh, a special player, bounce back from Grand Canyon, going to Vanguard next year. And just, uh, well, you'll see him tonight. He's going to stand out for sure. Well, there was a guy. And let's take a look very quickly before we switch subjects here. And there are the numbers for Will Anderson in the semifinals with the 10 kills, the 7 digs, the offense, the defense, the attack percentage, efficient as always at 333. And there was a guy on Thursday night who did a pretty good Will Anderson imitation for Long Beach City College, and that was Julian Zavala, who was outstanding again in a dual role, offensively and defensively. Yeah, Julian Zavala... Uh, you talk about the numbers, the gaudy numbers on the season for Will Anderson, state leader in kills. Well, Zavala had 24 kills, hit plus 500 on the night, and you see it there with his dig. He did it in the front and the back row, too, so both players uh, getting it done in the front and the back row, and, man, just an incredible matchup we have for us here tonight as uh, – both teams played each other earlier in the season. Both of those matches went five sets, and I have a feeling we're probably going five sets again. Yeah, there you see the otherworldly numbers from Zavala in the semifinals. The attack percentage at 537, 24 kills, 14 digs. Michael, very quickly, uh, we would be remiss if we didn't mention there's no shortage of stars and star performances, but we would be remiss if we didn't mention Kyler Tafunga and just an incredible performance in the back row. He was all over the place and made things just a nightmare for El Camino in that semifinal win for Long Beach. You're exactly right. And, uh, you know, you go back to a few years ago for Long Beach City in the state championship, it was Jordan Molina who was the MVP of the tournament. That was at L.A. Pierce. We had the chance to cover that uh, years ago. Our buddy Lance Walker uh, from L.A. Pierce, former coach for the Brahma Bulls. And, uh, well, Tafunga really in that mold of liberos under the helm of Jonathan Charette. And uh, he's a special player. He keeps it off the hardwood. You see uh, Tafunga uh, showing off a little personality as well. We'll have plenty of personality in the house tonight. This is going to be a packed house for both teams. And, well, hey, El Camino uh, in, in the loss versus Long Beach City, that almost felt like a home game for Long Beach and you expect the, the Vikings to travel well. Plenty of personality. I thought you were talking about me, but you brought it around <laughs> to somebody else. I see how it's going to be. This was an incredible semifinal matchup, an incredible final four. Uh, you couldn't throw a shoe in this semifinal and not hit a great matchup, uh, but I think most would agree, one versus two, uh, this was the matchup as a volleyball fan that you wanted to see. Long Beach and Orange Coast, it's coming up next here on SoCalCollegeSports.com.
Jacqueline. Getting ready for set number one, Long Beach City College and Orange Coast one and two. And winners of two of the last three championships and it only begins there with these two programs under two of the most successful uh, at this point, uh, I think bordering on legendary uh, coaches here in the 3C2A, Travis Turner in his 16th year and Jonathan Charette in his 11th season. Travis Turner at Orange Coast, Jonathan Charette at Long Beach City College. Both have brought multiple championships uh, to their respective schools in their tenures. Uh, these are powerhouse programs. Uh, we talked about that this was the third matchup of the season between these two teams. And uh, to say they were hotly contested, that's an all-time understatement. Forget the one-all in uh, match wins. How about overall points after 10 sets? 215 for Orange Coast, 211 for Long Beach City College. That's what separates these two teams after 10 sets. They meet again here tonight, third time, and this time the tiebreaker is going to bring a championship with it. Yeah, Jeff, you know, we, we've been here for – you know, more than the, the past half decade in the 3C2A. And, well, the final never seems to disappoint, and we had an outstanding match in game number two between El Camino, the host school, and Long Beach on Thursday. And, unfortunately, the host school goes down as the Warriors uh, really battled in that one, but the Vikings are uh, just a little bit better team in that one. And they will move on, and they're going to play, play this juggernaut of an Orange Coast College team that held IBC who's pretty steadily up front to under 100 kill percentage on the match. So, you know, is Zavala going to have the same type of success that he had on Thursday, or is it going to be a situation where the block party is in in full effect and Long Beach is going to have to adjust? Obviously, they play a lot faster style, a lot more transition, but, man, Orange Coast so big up front, very versatile. We talked about in the pregame with Will Anderson with his ability to play in the back row. He's a threat running the Bic, uh, and everything that you need in the back row passing-wise, you have it with Will Anderson. Yeah, they're introducing the starting lineups, and uh, Mike, you highlighted it when we talked with Travis Turner uh, briefly before the match here tonight. Uh, that's what he talked about was, this is a matchup of styles, and that uh, for Orange Coast, uh, we may be a little bit bigger, uh, uh, maybe a little more athletic up front, um, but Long Beach City College, they transition very quickly. We're going to try and slow it down, uh, try to use that size, that athleticism uh, to get over their defense uh, and have success that way. Meanwhile, Long Beach City College look for those quick transitions out of the passes, get to their offense more quickly uh, because Long Beach City College uh, arguably not quite going to match up up front, at least in terms of pure size. That's exactly right. And, uh, I wonder who that X factor is going to be here tonight, Jeff. You know, we had a couple of names that we th that we threw out in the pregame, one of them being Kyler Tafunga. But uh, I think Coach Turner alluded to one in our meeting with him prior to the matchup. And Jeff, I I'll let you I'll let you give us a sneak peek on that one. Well, I. I remember Coach Turner talked about a couple of different players, but one player that does deserve to be mentioned is Cash Adamson. And for fans of the Pirates, he is a one. He is the player that's been right alongside Will Anderson all season long as offensive option perhaps 1B, if you want to call it that way. But Adamson got off to a very fast start against Irvine Valley, really led the way in the first two sets as Anderson uh, got it going a little bit later and eventually closed it out. But those two working together uh, all season long, uh, has been integral in the Pirates' success. Let's quickly set the lineups for you to start. Cash Adamson along with Zach Weston, Josh Friedman, Will Anderson, Jake Diddy, and Sam Warren. The libero for Orange Coast is Tyler Vetter. Meanwhile, for Long Beach, we'll quickly set the lineup again. Sean Wynn along with Colby Prouse, Julian Zavala, Eric Hernandez, Luke Bissell, Amory Leomitty, and the libero, is Kyler Tafunga first playing Prouse into the net. And the Pirates, who serve first, get off to the quick start. Yeah, a bit of a miss hit there right off the bat for Long Beach City. Obviously not the start you wanted for the Vikings. Friedman, who actually missed the second matchup between these two teams. 
dink attempt from Prouse. Pirates back to work, and they go to Anderson initially, and he sends it wide. Tied at one after the side out. Missing Friedman is huge. Friedman has been among the leaders in assists all season long. He's a stand standout player. Josh Friedman out of Corona Del Mar and on his way to Ball State. Speaking of standout players, is Julian Zavala. Zavala will serve. Floater long. First serve error. Two to one, Orange Coast. Interestingly, in the two matchups between these two teams earlier this season, the team that lost the opening set went on to win the match in both cases. But, Mike, I'm willing to bet you that if you asked either coach, Travis Turner, Jonathan Charette, they'd take their chances winning set number one here tonight. <laughs> well, Anderson, who is dangerous on serve, fires in an ace to put the Pirates up 3-1. Goes right after Zavala. We talked about the matchup, that exact matchup in the pregame. We see it immediately from the service lines. Anderson with an ace. Averaging .4 aces per set on the season. Off the block and down for the Vikings as Eric Hernandez. Able to just beat the block attempt of Diddy to pull it back to 3-2. to two. Had a chance to talk to Jonathan Charette about some of the members of his team and Eric Hernandez. A fascinating story. I uh, said that Eric Hernandez got to be the hardest working guy. Not talking about the court. Jonathan Charette said during the season he counted three jobs that Eric Hernandez has in addition to showing up to practice and being a full-time student. Dink attempt laying out. It's better to keep it alive. We're still going. Work it back. Hernandez off the block, but it'll hang up for Friedman. Vetter back row set, flying in. It's Warren who sends it long. First real defensive contest of the night here, Michael, and it goes to Long Beach. Yeah, just a miss hit there. And to be honest, I thought the defense was better for Orange Coast. To Fungo with the floater. They'll mix it up. That's Cash Adamson. First swing tonight for Adamson, and he makes the most of it. He gets the kill. Pirates back out in front, four to three. Adamson out of Soquel High School, a freshman. Jake Diddy to serve. Rockets that one long. Both these teams among the best serving teams in terms of aces in the state, second and fourth, so top five. And that, Mike, only counts, uh, only underscores how important it is to pass serve in this one because these two teams are one and two in the state in both hitting percentage and assists. So if you let them get into their offense in system, you've got problems. Dink from Warren. And kept alive. Well, let's wait and see what the call is. No, they're going to say that got down. And the Pirates got the point. Zavala lays out first close call off. Wow. Well, we're going to get a great look at it here. No, and that, I think that's that, a good that call. A good call. It's a great job. Earl Vasquez down Lorvis, our referees tonight. 5-4. Alfred Rodriguez takes a little something off. The change up down in front of Anderson, and we're tied at five. Alfred Rodriguez, highly recruited middle blocker out of high school, but Jonathan Charette asked him to make the move to opposite and said that Alfred Rodriguez has absolutely embraced it, wanted to get better uh, if he can, uh, become more versatile. Uh, but it has been a learning experience for him, adapting to the new position. Pirates back out in front, 6-5. They go to Weston. Sends it wide of Hernandez. And the Pirates with a 6-5 lead. But that's a familiar refrain with the Vikings this season. Uh, some players moving around, uh, both uh, by necessity, but also uh, to improve. And Rodriguez has done that. Zavala, roofed. 
Darius McCraven. Jeff, we block. talked about it. That was a player of note, especially on the front line uh, that Coach Turner alluded to. Was going to see some action here tonight. Two meetings this season between these two teams. He only told one kill, making a difference already in this one. Yeah, Barrel didn't even play in the first one. Rodriguez misses the far side, and it's 8-5. The Pirates with the first run, three straight. And they now lead it 8-5. Yeah, McRaven didn't even play. Just one attack even in the second set, in the second matchup between these two teams. Zavala with the redirection, but Kling able to dig it out. There's the first dig for Tafunga, not the last that we're going to see. Kling again, Pirates back on the attack. Looking for Adamson, tools to block. Or did he get the, yeah, he got, I believe, Mike, he got the uh, the post on the far side. I think you're exactly right. We'll have a pretty good look of it here. Yeah. Trying to take it up the line. Did that touch first? That touched the block first? Uh, boy, that's close. Rodriguez right there. I should say Alfred uh, Doherty. Uh, right there, 8 Six, Leo Mete will serve. Good pass. The Pirates quickly to work, and Weston nets it. That was a good opportunity for Orange Coast, and Weston with a lot of opportunity here. And just sends it into the tape. 8-7. Amory Leo Mete will serve. 8-7. Early on, we're in set number one. 3C to a volleyball championship here on SoCalCollegeSports.com. Serve error from Leo Mitte, 9-7. Pirates back out in front by two. Substitution in Manning Lemoyne will come on. Lemoyne, freshman libero out of Folsom High School. He will serve. Floater. And Zavala, who gets it back on the give and go, and off the block of McCraven. Well, Mike, you saw Zavala rear back and go with the full swing against McCraven and have it sent back his last time. That time, more of a redirection. Able to play it off the block and get the point. 9 8. Always a game of adjustments. Sean Wynn will serve. Now the good pass, looking for McCraven off the block. Darius McCraven, and how about the elevation on Darius McCraven? Travis Turner telling us an amusing story about the three-on-three -three basketball tournament that they play at the end of the year. And uh, needless to say, Darius McCraven highly recruited after they uh, had a look at him at his play. Two sport athlete to be sure. Zavala finds the open court. Miscommunication in the back row with Adamson. Zavala with another kill. And early on, the Vikings seem content to try and get Zavala going first and foremost. Back within one at 10-9, Zavala to serve. Friedman, near side, Anderson, back near the scorer's table, it's still alive. Vikings get it over, in the middle, Diddy, but wait. As Hernandez was going for that ball, he made contact with the scorer's table. Let's watch here. I, I think that's an illegal touch, I think he double tapped it. Okay, so the illegal, uh, the illegal touch gives the point to Orange Coast. I have it as 11-9, but it only says 10-9 here in the gym. Yeah, they they haven't adjusted. Well, it was over near the scoreboard, the scoreboard operator, so it might just be that they're reorganizing here. Are they seeing to? I think everyone's okay, but they're they're pushing chairs back and getting everyone <laughs> uh, repositioned, and now uh, we'll see if they update the score. The Pirates have the serve, so the point has gone to Orange Coast, and now it is 11-9, Anderson to serve. My Fast goodness. ball controlled nicely, but miscommunication on the set. In the middle, Diddy has it sent back. From the back row, Anderson with a little bit of arc, able to play it off the block of Bissell. 12-9, Orange Coast back up three. This matches their largest lead. I mean, 
How special of a player is Will Anderson? Quick step close. He's in the back row for the kill through the block. Finds the window. And here's Anderson on the serve. Leading by three. Tried for the short that's a, that's just a over the tape, and it's off the tape and out of bounds. Classic so. announcer jinx here, Stoy. Well, that was a little bit on Will Anderson. He tried something different there. He did. <laughs> we hadn't seen that much. He's got the good fastball. There's no question about that. Went to the change, tried to get the tape, and did, but it went wide, and Tafunga will serve. Adamson has that rejected. Prouse in the area, 12 to 11. Vikings back within one. It was really Leo Mitty coming over. Able to get the block. And we're back within one. Tafunga, interesting. Fans of the Vikings, uh, no doubt aware that Kyler's younger brother, Cameron, is on the team as well. And is slated to take over as the libero next season. Take a look at this one here. We'll have good call on that one just inside the line, 13 to 11. So Cameron will take over for older brother Kyler next season, and that means that uh, Jonathan Charette can look forward to at least one more season with a Tafunga on the roster. Rice will serve, having checked in. Quick set for Leo Mitte. Emery Leo Mitte. Pulls the Vikings back within one. Diddy will come back to replace William Rice. There we see that transition offense for the Vikings paying dividends. Here comes Rocha. Yeah, when we talked about Kyler Tafunga, uh, Michael, it, it made me think of uh, what we learned about Travis Hanneman uh, as well with that uh, pedigree and Coach Charette pointing out that uh, uh, there's a lot of Tafungas around and uh, brothers uh, in that family who have gone on uh, to Stanford, among others. So a lot of pedigree in that Perfect family pass. as well. Good pass. And the cross court from Hernandez after look, the set from Rocha. Look at the pass. That's all set up by Tafunga. Hard angle through the block. And down, tied up 13 all. Rocha, who will serve. Another good pass, and flying in from the back row, it's Adamson. Who? There's the back. Yeah, just uh, lines up the crush ball. Yeah. 14-13. The Pirates have led throughout. Vikings have pulled even a couple of times, but still looking for the lead. So far as advertised between these two teams. 14-13. Grayson Kling, freshman setter. Granite Bay High School, off the tape. But the pass sets up Rocha. Rodriguez looking to redirect. Net contact. Going against the Pirates, we're all even again at 14. And Eric Hernandez, the Western State Athletic Conference Player of the Year, will serve for the Vikings. Going down to get it, it's Vetter looking for McCraven. McCraven misses it wide, and the Vikings have the lead at 15-14. I believe this is their first lead. It's certainly their first lead since very early in the contest. Eric Hernandez ready. And will serve better with the pass. Back to McRaven. Up the line this time. Plays it off the block. Gets the kill. We're tied at 15. Now able to get it around the block of Doherty. And Rocha can't handle it. Tied at 15. Adamson off the tape again. Rocha. Back set, Doherty lines up a crush ball of his own. And again, you look at the size of Doherty. 
And again, heavily recruited out of high school as a middle blocker. But to his credit, asked to, to make a move and embraced it. And Jonathan Charette was effusive in his praise about not only uh, the ability to pick up the skill set, which is not easy, but also in his attitude about it, being open to any way to get better. The dink and Leo Mete there. Zavala from six feet back. Vikings back to work. Zavala will try again off the block. And Adamson can't keep it alive. The Vikings step out to their largest lead at 17-15. That's a great adjustment there by Zavala. Denied on the first go around. Comes through on the second. The Vikings with a two-point lead as we come down the stretch in set one. Leomete will serve. Vikings on a run of their own. They have the lead at 17-15. It's Bissell along with Doherty and Zavala up front. Hernandez along with Rocha and Leomete on the floor for Long Beach. Got to believe we're going to see something going the way of Will Anderson here, Michael. Trouble on the pass. Bump set from Anderson, and McCraven content to send it over. Oh. But a whiff for Leo Mete trying to set. That is a big break for the Pirates. The Vikings had a chance to extend on the lead. But Leo Mete. I think these are two teams with a margin of error is very thin. Yep. And you can't miss out on opportunities if you're the Vikings. Essentially a free ball on the roll shot there for McCraven. And just sh shank the set. LeMoyne will serve. Rocha across to Zavala, rejected by McRaven, who was right there. We wondered what the block would look like against Zavala. McRaven has, has answered the bell in big fashion. That's the second block on this set for McRaven on Zavala. Mike, I just get the feeling that it's hard to go with the full swing power against a guy like McRaven. He just gets so high on the block. Yeah. Doherty has it sent back. Vikings scrambling. Free ball for the Pirates. Kling back set. McRaven hangs and sends it into the tape. Zavala returns the favor with a little help from Bissell. No, I, I, I think that was a kill there for McRaven. Was it? I think it went, hit the block, went down on the Long Beach side. Okay. Pirates with a one-point lead. Timeout, Long Beach City. and forth first set 18-17 as McRaven does get the kill off the block to give the Pirates the lead again three straight for Orange Coast and they're back in front with Lemoyne to serve free ball that was a tremendous floater and a free ball and Anderson off of Tafunga this is going to come right in your living room here from Will Anderson and this a marquee matchup Tafunga there but a little bit handcuffed and for Anderson, that's his third kill. So far, they've done a pretty good job, had the Vikings against Anderson, three kills and two errors. So the attack percentage at 143. Joust ball, still alive. Lemoyne, they're scrambling. It's going to take a long bump and not going to get there from Adamson. Just too much to overcome, what and the Vikings get the point. Let's go back here. That's an incredible job. Look at Rocha save the set and eventually leads to the point. 
That's great work from Rocha. Rocha on that defending state championship squad back in 2019 for the Vikings. And looking to go back to back. Obviously, this is the, this is, haven't been here for a few years, but happy to be back. There's another 50 50 ball, and the Vikings send it into the corner. Zavala, very alert. Rocha, another player for the Vikings, uh, whose uh, biggest impediment uh, on the team this year has been the schedule. Uh, he works full-time for United Airlines and initially was thinking that he was not even going to be able to make it back to play this year. Dink from Anderson, but Zavala anticipates well. And Hernandez what, on what? the pick off of Vetter. Jeff, watch the action here. They send Zavala with the bump, back, and they set up right in the middle, one-on-one, -on -one, and that is, uh, that is a prime opportunity. The Vikings back up 2019. Another lead change. Kling. Anderson. Vikings get it back, but another opportunity. This one from the back row. Adamson looking for the corner, and he got it. That's a great job by Adamson. Cash Adamson More with three kills. Than power. Whoa. Let's, let's go back and see that here. Did that hit, or was that out? No, oh, that's, that's, that's in. That, that's in right on the line. Yep. Jonathan Charette hoping for a call, but that's about five feet away from him. He knows it. Tied to 20. Tight first set. Another tight set between these teams. Friedman on serve. Quick sets. Just long. Bissell in the middle. This was well done by the Vikings. Quick set from Wynn. And Bissell with the lane and just fired it long. 21 20. Friedman ready. Good pass from Zavala again. And this time Bissell off the block. Sent right over my shoulder. Not a, not a good idea to have the ball heading toward me. Look at that though, Michael. I never move. You're, you're like, a, it's like that Kobe non-flinch versus Matt Barnes. I <laughs> did 21. I think it's, now at this point, I think it's just my reactions are that slow. <laughs> I think once upon a time, it might have been something different. Anderson whiffs on the pass, but better there, but a free ball for the Vikings. Win with another quick set. Bissell, couple of quick kills for Luke Bissell. Vikings now on top, 22-21. Got to love Zavala and Anderson targeting each other on the serves. Watch this here, Zavala from the far end. He's going right after Anderson. I think they're hiding Anderson here. And Vetter moves over to take it. And Anderson instead with the finish, tied at 22. That's a great response there from Anderson. And Anderson didn't get off to a torrid start on Thursday either. More as they were running the offense, much more through Cash Adamson. But he had a couple of errors early on tonight, but he's heating up to the task. And now a great serve to give the Pirates a 23-22 lead. That is a couple of kills and a winner on serve for Anderson in the last couple of minutes. That's not targeting anyone. That's targeting Wood. We'll see that one one more time. Look at the action there on this ace from Will Anderson. No chance for Tafunga. 23-22, and the Pirates two points away from taking set one.
Pirates lead it by one. Will Anderson to serve 23-22. Set number one. And both schools, the contingent making the trip. Great pass. Tafunga with a tremendous pass, but the block from Warren and Diddy on Bissell. The Vikings trying to go back to Bissell. No, that was Hernandez. That's a great read up front. Set point. Anderson will look to close it out. Leans in. Another great pass. Hernandez up the line, but it's Friedman with a tremendous dig. Nonetheless, the Pirates have to send it over. Another chance for the Vikings. They try the back, and Zavala coming in from the back row into the tape. First set in the books. The Pirates grab it and take a one to nothing lead as they close it out with three straight and take set number one, 25-22. Orange Coast taking set number one, 25-22. And uh, Michael, I think we're uh, near capacity here, if not at capacity. We're full up on both sides, now let's and why the, not? Let's hope the fire marshal doesn't make a visit. This is not only for the 3C2A championship, it's a pretty scintillating matchup in any venue. Top two teams. All season long, really. Meeting for the third time. And Orange Coast in a back Jeff, and forth opening set. Jeff, you go back to that opening set, and we talked about the margin of error. You go back to the missed opportunity on the shank set for Long Beach City when they had a free ball, essentially, from McCraven. Yep. And they give up that point. There was 22 all at one point. OCC goes on a quick run. 3-0, closes out set number one. And again, if you're a Viking fan and you're looking for some good news, this in the third matchup and in the first two matchups, they followed the exact same pattern. Uh, one team won the first set. The other team won the next two sets. Then it was tied at two before each team then won a fifth set. But the first set has gone against the team that won the first two times. So the Vikings will have to rebound. 
and Sean Wynn will start out with the floater. Friedman scrambling on the set. Tafunga with the dig. Hernandez gets the line. 3rd dig tonight for Tafunga, and that was a big one. I think that was out. Well, I think it might have been off of Vetter, as we see on the replay. Let's see if that maybe got a piece of Vetter. Either way, it's Long Beach up 1-0. Yeah. A whiff on the serve. Vetter will give chase, but he's not going to get there. 2-0. to nothing. Let's go back to that play here. Well, no contact there. I'm thinking better in the back line. But I think that's out. And perhaps a break for the Vikings who have the 2 nothing laid win. Definitely does send that one long. 2 to 1. Vikings grab the lead. They come out with Bissell and Prouse, Zavala, Hernandez, Tafunga and win to start set number two. Give you the Pirate lineup momentarily. Will Anderson, who closed it out on serve, will start set number two. Prouse able to tool the block on the redirect. That was all tool. That's a great adjustment. Yeah, he's not going full swing there. No, he's punching, able to play he's it. punching at the block and ex got exactly what he wanted. For Orange Coast, it's Diddy, Warren, Friedman, Adamson, Anderson, and Vetter serve error. And the Pirates are back within one at three to two, and here comes Zach Weston. Uh, right now, Zavala struggling from the service line and really hitting the ball as well. A few, few hitting errors, see a couple service errors. And, well, the silver lining is you only lost by three in that opening set, and Anderson played pretty well. Weston, who comes on, had an efficient and strong semifinal, six kills and an attack percentage of 6-6-7 on the night. Prouse into the net and we're tied at three. Jake Diddy to serve, so Diddy and Weston on together for the Pirates. Tafunga Great pass. passes that rocket. Prouse up the line. Vikings back out in front, four to three. And uh, credit Tafunga big time on that one. As he All starts handles with a good that pass. rocket. Speaking of Kyler, there he is. Four three. Going after his opposite number, Zavala, with the dig. Laying out, it's Friedman, but the point going to go to the Vikings. That violation, it looked like. We'll have a pretty good look at it here. Yeah, watch Warren. Yep, right there at the end. Takes the tremendous dig from Friedman off the board. 5-3. Oh. Tafunga. Friedman goes back to Warren. Roofed by Leo Mitte and Hernandez. Let's watch the replay and see who got more of it. And it's Hernandez. It's Hernandez. 6-3. Six, the Vikings double up the Pirates early. At what point does Travis Turner think about a timeout? Not going to do it now. Better. Stumbles on the pass, but the Pirates are still going, and Adamson finishes it out. For the side out, Pirates back within two. Grayson Kling back on with Darius McRaven, replacing Friedman and Warren for the Pirates. Kling will come on to serve with the Pirates trailing by two. Kling the lefty, clean ace for Grayson Kling. You can't do it a whole lot better than this. Falls right off the table, what a great job. Yeah, and Tafunga 
and Zavala both making a move, but it's right in between them. And so easy for miscommunication on that kind of ball. Six to five. Pirates second in the state in aces on the season. Zavala with a tremendous pass. Back set, Prouse has that one blocked, but the Vikings dig it out. Hernandez off the block. Now the Pirates can look to attack. Back set, up the line, and it is just wide from McCraven. It's a good read from Zavala. Hit the R. Now here comes Rocha. Rocha will serve. This is the first appearance of the season for Rocha against Orange Coast. He missed both of the previous meetings. Of course, the center position was ably manned by the starter, Sean Wynn. But Rocha does give them nice depth. One-timer for Doherty. And the Vikings out to an 8-5 lead. Though John, uh, Jonathan Charette did uh, let me know that uh, Rocha was so anxious to be part of the team and part of the action this year that he did come running in in the first matchup between these two teams directly from work. A whip on the serve. 9-5. Travis Turner is up. Is he going to go for a timeout here as the Vikings have their largest lead of the night at four? I was playing with Little House Money after taking set one. Obviously, you want to quell that momentum, but you also want to let your guys figure it out. Timeout for Orange Coast. So much for that. Vikings with the 9-5 lead in set two, set one to the Pirates. in favor of Long Beach trying to bounce back here in set two they're off to a quick start Rocha will serve sophomore out of Redondo Union High School Rocha an integral part of the championship team from 2019 the last champion crowned <laughs> in men's volleyball in the 3C2A we'll have a new one tonight in about an hour Rocha Anderson with the pass off the dig of Zavala Adamson. Too much heat. And the Pirates break the run. They're back within three. Adamson will serve. Serve error from Adamson, 10 to 6. Just the third serve error for Orange Coast against three aces, and they'll take that ratio all day. 10-6. Eric Hernandez getting ready to serve for the Vikings. Off the tape and down. Third ace for the Vikings. Five-point lead for Long Beach. Both teams doing a tremendous job of spreading it around thus far. Just wide for Hernandez, 11-7. Up to the moment, Hernandez and Doherty with five kills and Zavala with four. And for Orange Coast, Adamson and Anderson with four and McRaven with three. And that's not a big departure for either team from what they've been doing all year. But again, when you have two teams that know each other so well, so important to make reads. And nowhere to go. Doherty off the block. Another kill. Doherty with six. And a hitting percentage of 750. Now for Alfred Doherty. Thank you, 
Doherty has been incredibly efficient all season long against Orange Coast. He had a perfect six for six on attacks in the first meeting between these two teams. More trouble on the pass. It's all Vikings in set number two with Leo Mitty on serve. And the Vikings now lead at 13 to seven. Just to finish the point on Doherty in the second uh, matchup between these two teams. Again, perfect on two attacks with two kills in the one set that he played. So he has been a problem for the Pirates all season long. Just long from Leo Mitte, 13 to 8. Here comes Friedman and Warren for Kling and McCraven. Travis Turner continuing to rotate between those pairs. And Friedman will serve. Zavala, wild on the pass, but they get it to Doherty, but Friedman with the dig. Sent back against Anderson, who keeps it alive. One-timer from Warren. Dug out, whistle comes in. This might have been net contact against the Vikings. See here on the replay. Thirteen to nine. Pirates within four. And there is a look at Josh Friedman. Again, Friedman heading to Ball State. Zach Weston, Sam Warren have also. Uh, made a decision moving on to UCSD. Looking for an explanation. It's Julian Zavala. The point's been awarded to the Pirates, and it's 13 to 9. And again, for the Vikings, they're not going to be in any big hurry to get back to it. The Pirates just starting to get some momentum in set number two with a couple of points, so. Vikings might try to cool them off a bit. Make Friedman wait. Now we're ready to go. Floater from Friedman. Good set. Rocha goes to Doherty. And Doherty finds the tape. 13 to 10. Three straight for Orange Coast. This becomes a critical juncture for the Vikings. They've led by as many as six. Zavala from five feet back, off the block. Adamson finds Friedman, they work the middle. Diddy makes it four straight. The Pirates solidly on a run, timeout Long Beach. The Viking lead is down to two in set two. You're watching the 3C2A Men's Volleyball Championship on SoCalCollegeSports.com. Pirates on a run with Friedman on serve. Third in the state in assist per set. But now doing the job on the serve, but Doherty out of the timeout. Alfred Doherty making the transition to the outside and able to beat Anderson on the block. 14 to 11 to end the Pirate run. The Viking lead is three, Sean Wynn. On to serve when was on his way to Concordia. 
out of high school. Before coming to the Vikings, Anderson able to tool the block. Side out, and the Pirates back within two. But a coaching change at Concordia. And Wynn makes the decision to come to Long Beach City. Work under Jonathan Charette, and then once again make himself available for recruitment at the four-year level. On the line as Anderson fires another ace. The Pirates continue to serve well. You just can't place it any better than that. He walked over there and put it down. Couldn't find a better spot. Surgical. 14-13, Anderson will serve. Trying to go back to the same off, spot. Off a touch. Off a touch. Watch this. Comes right at the camera. Yeah, he's looking at Eric Hernandez. Yeah, and Hernandez. I, I think he just couldn't, couldn't judge whether or not if it was going to go long. And yep. Before he could take his hand away, catches a piece. It's 14-all. It's a 7-1 run for the Pirates. Partial whiff from Bissell, but it goes off the block and ends up being a point for the Vikings. Well, Mike, you made the point uh, about a missed opportunity and perhaps a bad break for the Vikings in that first set at a critical juncture, and it ends up going to the Pirates. Let's see if that good break is something that keys the Vikings here because it looked like Bissell just fanned on it, but it ends up going off the block. That's long. We're tied at 15. Not, not sure if it's jitters for Zavala, but... He has been incredibly shaky from the service line. That just cannot happen here tonight. Yeah, that's his third serve error. He has four kills, and the, the hitting percentage is at 083 right now for Zavala. Tied at 15. Rice on to serve. Tafunga able to get the pass. Prouse. From about six feet back, the Pirates it. are struggling. They are able to get it back. Free ball for the Vikings. Back set. And a missile from Prouse. Of the heat-seeking variety, my goodness. Yeah. If the floor was on fire, that was a heat seeker. Because it was on its way. 16-15. Kobe Prouse, another four-year recruit. Prouse recruited out of high school at Benedictine, an NAIA school in Arizona, before he made the decision to come back here in Long Beach City. Now it's Vetter with a whiff on the pass. 17-15, the Vikings nose out in front again by two. You look at the float action there from the service line to Tafunga. The Vikings back out with a little cushion, 17-15 in set two. Better with a solid pass. Warren hanging and delivers the kill. Well, that starts with Tyler Vetter getting the Pirates into system. And Warren, the recipient, finds a lane, gets the kill. Pirates within one, 17-16. Another tight set. After the Vikings led by as many as six. Kling will serve. The lefty going back after Hernandez. I was just going to say it was an ace last time. And how about another one? 17 all. Yeah, that's brutal. And Hernandez in that corner. And we're going to see a substitution. And Jeffrey Mike makes his first appearance here tonight. Mike uh, operates uh, generally as the relief for Eric Hernandez for the Vikings. And so he comes on. Vikings will go for a little different look. Zavala with a very good pass. Win with the set. They go back to Prouse, who works at cross court. Kling can't get there. All set up by the pass. A beauty from Zavala. Uh, if you can't do it at the net or the service line, make yourself available. Another facet to the game as Zavala sets up Prouse. A beauty. 18-17, the Vikings back out in front. And Jeff, I wonder if that's the type of play that can get Zavala going in the hitting game and let him lock in on his serve. 
Floater from Rocha, Anderson with an excellent pass. That leads to Weston in the middle. Weston, much like Doherty on the opposite side, has been very efficient in the matchup between these two teams. And they get it to Kling. Quick transition, we're tied at 18. McRaven back on with Kling. Serve error from Adamson, and Adamson has had a struggle on serve as well. That's his second serve error. Vikings back out in front, 19 to 18. This a critical set, particularly for the Vikings, you have to imagine. They can ill afford to go down two sets to none. Joust ball, and it's Weston who redirects but sends it long. Twenty to eighteen. I believe it was a net violation on the Pirates. Technically, anyway, either way, the Vikings get the point. Back up two with Mike to serve. Vetter going down to get that one. Looking for Anderson off the block. Mike lays out. Wow. Doherty punches it over. Back set. McCraven high in the air. Rocha keeps it alive. To Funga. Mike sends it over. Wow. Pirates back on the attack. McCraven to Funga down to get it again. Doherty keeps it alive. Another free ball coming for the Pirates. Vetter. Will they look middle? No, back to McCraven who finishes it off. Wow. What a point. I mean, that is unbelievable defense. But you got to give the Pirates a lot of credit. They stayed poised. Kept on mounting the attack. Found McCraven who gets it done. The Pirates within one. Lemoyne will serve. Trouble on the pass. Leo Mente keeps it alive. Another free ball for the Pirates. Vikings continue to scramble. Anderson, Anderson able to redirect it off the block. We're tied at 20. Watch the play here from Will. He just grabs it, takes it into the hand of the defense. Off to the side, and we're tied up 20 all. Wow. Well, the Vikings with sensational defense on the last two points, but nothing to show for it. The Pirates have been able to win the last two, and now they're even at 20. This one's going to go down to the wire again. Lemoyne will serve, and again, the Vikings looking for an expla uh, explanation, Michael, and it's uh, Zavala who will come over again. I, I, I wonder if they're looking at how he grabs the ball here. Does he palm it and then send it? Yeah, yeah I, I, I think he does. I, that's what they're asking about. Are you allowed to do that? And the, the answer is no. Palms in midair. First off, that's one heck of a play. Let's see it one more time here. Yeah, it's, it's such a gray area, Mike, because you will see that kind of redirect with the hand and a little bit of a push. So... Is it one of those situations where, and we have a yellow card on Long Beach. Some choice words uh, not to the liking of the, of the official. We have a yellow card. Tied at 20. But anyway, it's one of those things where you know it when you see it. And Lemoyne will have to serve from a set stance. Zavala tools the block and gets it back for the Vikings who are back up one at 21-20. As you said moments ago, Michael, uh, presciently, uh, was that point a couple of minutes ago maybe something that could get Zavala going? That's another kill. That's an adjustment there, and you expect players under the tutelage of Jonathan Charette to make those adjustments. Uh, really a key dynamic throughout his tenure at Long Beach City. Before him, Randy Tutorp, now athletic director for the Vikings. And here is Cameron Tafunga, the younger brother of Kyler. He will come on to serve and sends it into the net. That ties it up at 21. Seventh serve error for Long Beach tonight. 
Friedman will serve. Tied at 21. How do you like it so far, Michael? Incredible match. Not bad. Living up to the billing, that's for sure. Friedman ready. Floater Zavala there. Good pass. Back set. And Doherty able to push it off the block. I think, nope. I, I think that was off the antenna. Was it yep. off the Yep. Yeah, that's that's a great call. Great uh, camera shot there. Thank you. From that side. So, yes, it goes to OCC. They lead it 22-21 again. I believe this is their first lead. Of the set, blocked, but kept alive by Bissell. Free ball coming for the Pirates. Friedman, far side, and on the line, Adamson. We'll have a pretty good, pretty good look of it here. It looks like that was Anderson. Yeah, that's in. That's a good call, and it is Will Anderson who gets the kill. 23-21, timeout on the floor. The Vikings going to burn a timeout late in set two. It's the 3C2A Volleyball Championship. Here on the Bay Area Online Sports Network and SoCalCollegeSports.com. Twenty-three, twenty-one, and so far, Mike, uh, one of the storylines has to be late in the sets. It's the Pirates who have uh, been yeah. a little bit better, and now a misfire on the set over Zavala. 24-21, Orange Coast just a point away from a two sets to none lead. Uh, and, Mike, again, it, it's been a lot about the execution in the latter stages. These have been back and forth sets until the late stages. Free middle serve. Mike with the pass. Rocha. Doherty leans back, has that one sent back. Zavala one times it. Vetter is there. Pirates looking for the set. Anderson off the block. Orange Coast up two sets to none. They take set number two, 25 21. Well, when in doubt, go to the horse. There was some doubt in set number two for OCC but they know how to close the show. Big run for the Pirates, up now 2-0, a set away from the 2022 3C2A Men's Volleyball Crown.
first two sets to the Pirates. And now they will get set for set number three with Friedman, Anderson, Diddy, Warren, Vetter, and Adamson. Meanwhile, the Vikings come back with Prouse, Bissell, Mike, Zavala, Leometi, and Win. The Vikings led 13-7 at one point in set number two. They also had a lead of 18 to 15. But Orange Coast able to storm back and win it 25-21. That's a tremendous job of turning the tables. And so often with teams that are this good but also know each other this well, it becomes about adjustments, not just on the sideline with the coaches, but on the floor with the players. And you just have to give the Pirates an awful lot of credit. Able to turn it around in set number two, and now they're one set away. Zavala. They look for Prowse, who takes a little off. Friedman with a good read. Bump set. Warren to Funga. Digs it out. Back set. Zavala. And has that one blocked. Diddy and Anderson in the middle. 1-0 in favor of Orange Coast. Trying to get Zavala going from the back row, and Anderson with a denial. Friedman will serve. Again, Zavala, good job on the pass. In the middle quickly. And Bissell will get the kill as Warren can't keep it alive. We shouldn't be too surprised to see Zavala uh, performing so well uh, returning serve, Michael. Uh, in 2020, uh, Zavala came to this team as a libero. Service ace for the Vikings. 2-1 Long Beach City. And it's Mike on serve. Jeffrey Mike, another fascinating story for the Vikings that we'll hope that perhaps we can get to. Sends this one wide. Hey, he, was, he was coming right after the broadcast cockpit here. <laughs> I refuse to believe that. <laughs> to all. Will Anderson ready to serve. To Funga. What a pass. Quick set. Bissell able to win the battle with Diddy. Gets the kill. Three to two. Vikings back up in front. They're going to have to come all the way back if they want to repeat as champions. They were our last crowned champion in 2019, and Tafunga catches the tape, tied at three. You know, you go back to the year, you know, for those who follow 3C28 men's volleyball, particularly Long Beach City, there was a year, Golden West College was in the semifinals, and they had Long Beach City in the semis on the brink. And I believe in that match, Long Beach City was down 2 enough and came back with the flurry. They were Browse. down in that fourth set. Force five, win it in five to go on to win it that year. That was the year that we talked about earlier in this broadcast where Jordan Molina was the MVP of the tournament. And this is one of those situations here, down to nothing versus a very, very talented Orange Coast College team. That you maybe wonder the Pirates might be a little bit too much to overcome that steep a hill. Adamson, meanwhile, misses long, and the Vikings back out to a 4-3 lead, and Joseph Rocha will serve. Friedman, the give and go. Warren off the block. Zavala with the push. Illi okay, net, net contact. Yeah, net violation on Orange Coast. Again, a busy night for our officials, Earl Vasquez and Donald Orvis. There you see the, the contact. 5-3. 
Floater from Rocha. Warren gets just enough of it. Able to tool the block, but not all the way out. Mike keeps it alive. Zavala. They're saying that was gets a, touch. a piece. Yeah, of the block. So Zavala will get the kill. The Vikings grab an early lead again. Their bench is still into it. They're trying to fire up the team. And where was this? I believe this was off of Warren. Just a fingertip there. Man, if there was a touch, it's very slight. But enough. Rocha, Vetter, down on one knee. The Bick. Good gosh. With Anderson <laughs> springing forward. Wow, coming behind the fake. Massive swing. He's have, he has an absolute whip. Uh, I'll tell you, off of that pass and that, that set, I'm not even sure you really need the misdirection, but it looked nice. Uh, I'll say that, but I think with the lane that Anderson had there, he's going to rocket that one home no matter what, but that is terrific execution. Rocha. Zavala has that one sent back. Six five. Just when the Pirates need it, they come up with a response. That has been the storyline tonight. Big points have gone to Orange Coast, especially late. Kling. Zavala does a great job. Leo Mete tries to push. Meanwhile, contact, couple of players down. Rocha, Leo Mete, everybody's back up. Rocha's holding the right, his right shoulder. The Vikings do get the point seven five on the net violation. So 7-5. Zavala will serve. There you see Rocha still working that right shoulder, but he's going to stay on. Ismael Placentia, one of our camera ops. Better. What a job by Anderson to keep it alive. Now Doherty has to scramble. Both teams out of system. Mike has that one blocked, but the Vikings have it back. Bump set. The push from Mike. Kling with the dig out. And just long from Adamson. No, on the line. Boy, that was close. All right, have a pretty good look of it here. And again, a reminder, it's the white line at the front of the blue area. That is the line. This may be the better angle. Oh, that's, that's, out. That's, that's long. Clearly out. Yeah, there's most of them are incredibly close. There's there's no doubt about that. That's clearly that, out. That though is plain to the naked eye. Uh, there's no question. Yeah, let's watch here one more time and take a look. And there is no doubt. Like that's that's a few inches. That's six inches. Well, we have a uh, we have people looking at the monitor here, and obviously that's not something that's official. How long till we can get that done, though? You know, <laughs> terrible call. Wow. Go back to it one more time. That is tough. That is tough, Mike, because that's right in front of the Long Beach bench, and I think what makes that so tough is they know. That was a missed call. You can't even tell yourself at any level, well, maybe that got a piece of the line. It's hard for us to tell from the other side. The Vikings are going to have to find a way to shake that off and go on knowing 100% that that was a bad call that went against them. So 7-6. The lead is one. Rocha going back to Mike. What a tremendous job laying out, but the one-timer from Mike. Adamson kept it alive, but this time it was the Vikings who stayed poised after it was sent over by McRaven. That's a great response for the Vikings. Still up a point, now up by two after that kill from Mike, and Mike has been a huge difference. He was a difference when he was inserted into the ball game on Thursday versus El Camino, and he was part of the force that took things out in four versus the Warriors. Yeah. A guy who has had to take a couple of leave of absences from the team uh, for undisclosed reasons, also suffered two sprained ankles uh, when he was trying to make his way back to the team, but he comes to Coach Charette and says, 
hey, I want to be part of this. What can I do? Uh, how can I rejoin the team? And Coach Red says, welcomes him back and says, hey, you got to pay your dues here a little bit. Uh, show us you're back on the team. And he has done that and worked his tail off to get back. And now he's finally medically cleared to play as the serve goes long. Eight to seven, a one-point lead for Long Beach City. Manning Lemoyne will serve. 8-7. The Pirates down one. They lead it two sets to none. Quick set. Doherty, who's been quiet of late. Kling with the dig. Anderson trying to play it off the block. And does. Okay, uh, originally, okay, they are going to give it to Long Beach. One official indicated... Long Beach, the other one indicated Orange Coast. Over on that other side, this is probably about the antenna. Let's take a look. Well, no. No, I don't think that went off. It goes off the top of the tape, not the block. Right. Yep, that's exactly it. Good call, Michael. And that is exactly what the call was. And give the officials credit. They, they got it right. They made, yeah, they made eye contact. They One called one way, the other called the other way. And they sorted it out. And that time, uh, they got the call right. And that one went for the Vikings, and they lead it now 9-7 as Sean Wynn will serve. Kling looking for McRaven off the block. What a dig from Tafunga. Mike from six feet back. Adamson, they'll go to Anderson. This time it's Zavala with the dig. Bump set, and Prowse. They'll send it over. Anderson off the block again. Zavala again digs it out, looking for Mike. That's a great rally by both teams, but in the end, it's Mike with the crush ball. Three-point lead, Vikings. You know, Mike, I'm looking over at the bench and looking for Eric Hernandez because one of the things that Jonathan Tread talked about is that uh, how this team pulls together and that when Hernandez was struggling and they went to Mike that there was no sulking from Hernandez and instead he was fired up and pulling for Mike and couldn't be happier for the job that he was doing. McCraven, meanwhile, has it blocked. Prowse reaches out to keep it alive. In the middle, 50-50 ball. Great out by McCraven. Pirates still going from the back line. Adamson That's out. And sends it long. Vikings on a run, leading it 11-7. But it'd be so easy for a guy like Eric Hernandez, the Western State Conference Player of the Year, uh, to be frustrated uh, and let that get to him. But on Thursday night, that was not the case. He got behind Mike and his teammates as they finished it out. That's a lift. Anderson, well long, off the but tip. off the tip. 11-8. to eight. Another kill for Will Anderson. And it's a big one for the Pirates. As it breaks the Viking run, the Vikings still lead it by three. And that, there was some uh, there was some disappointment from the Long Beach crowd uh, as they felt that that was a clear lift from Tyler Vetter. No call. Bump set from Wynn. Prowse from six it's feet a back. Great step close from Prowse with a nice swing. Anderson looking for that back line and he missed. Anderson took a little something off, tried to arc for the back line, Michael, and sent that one long, 12-8. to eight. Four-point lead again as Jeffrey Mike will serve. A little gamesmanship here. Bring out the towel, disrupt the server. Well, I think to be fair, We've seen the Vikings appear to do this type of thing oh, a time or two tonight as well. It's, uh, it's dueling banjos for yeah, sure. Yeah, I, I think. <laughs> I think the Pirates might be owed one, arguably. Uh, Twelve to eight. <laughs> and Mike is ready. Get ready for a fastball here. Nice pass. Diddy has that one partially blocked. The Vikings on the attack. They work the middle with Bissell. 
13 to eight. Travis Turner wants a timeout, he'll get one. The Vikings with a five point lead trying to stay alive in set number three. It's the 3C2A Men's Volleyball Championship here on SoCalCollegeSports.com. Five-point lead for the Vikings. They trail it two sets to none. Jeffrey Mike getting ready to serve. Outside hitter, a sophomore out of Lucerna High School, has come on for Eric Hernandez and brought a lift for the Vikings. Anderson to Funga with the dig. 50-50 ball just sent wide by hey, look, Prouse. Net, net violation. Was there a net violation as well? It's hard to tell when both happened, but yeah, the net definitely moving and 13-9. Well, the Pirates have been pretty good on the serve of Will Anderson. See if they can keep a run going. Back to Prouse. Whistle comes in. I think that was a net on OCC. Let's watch the replay. Prouse well set up and yeah, on the block it looks like Adamson right on top of the net and did he did he get it with the leg? Right there. So the point to Long Beach, 14 to nine. Tafunga will serve. Floater in some trouble for Anderson. He sent from the back row. Adamson blocked, did he? Pushes it over. Zavala has that block, Leomete takes it out. Prouse going cross court. Just wide. 14-10. William Rice, serve specialist on for the Pirates. OCC down four. Zavala with the pass. When back to Prowse. Rouse finds open floor, 15-10. Great swing. Yeah, he's got some lanes in that back row and able to get it down. Vikings up five. Here comes Hernandez. You see the change in the rotation. That's a, that's a pretty potent rotation with Prouse and Zavala up front. Obviously, Prouse now to the bench. Rocha back on. Serving. Friedman all the way across to Adamson going up the line and gets the line. 15-11. How about the set here from Friedman? That is not easy to do. A cross-court set, essentially, to Adamson, who squeezes it down the line. Grayson Kling will serve. Fastball coming, Michael. Nice job by Mike. They look for Hernandez, who's returned. Adamson in front of Mike. 15-12. Well, let's see now with Eric Hernandez back for the Vikings. Hernandez along with Leomente Zavala. Mike, Rocha, and Tafunga on the floor. And uh, not a shocker, Kling serving. And as soon as somebody has a droplet of sweat hit the floor, here comes the towel. We're going to keep it on this camera angle here as Kling is going to bring the fastball. Let's see what it's like to deal with. Man. Great pass from Tafunga. Looking for Zavala. 
rejected by Adamson and Weston. 15-13. Pirates come up with the roof. And it was Cash Adamson. Timeout on the floor. The Vikings want to talk it over. 15-13 in set number three, the 3C2A Men's Volleyball Championship on the Bay Area Online Sports Network. Tightening up once again after the Vikings led by five. The lead is down to two with Grayson Kling on serve for Orange Coast. Kling with a couple of aces already tonight. And look at that, a third one going after Zavala. 15-14. That's a brutal serve to have to deal with from Kling. And he has got the Pirates to within one. Well, this has been such a big part of the Pirates' success all season long. Such a strong serving team. Takes a little something off. Zavala lays out. Free ball. But a free ball coming for the Pirates. McCraven off the block. Now it's Tafunga. One-timer. And Adamson puts it away to tie it up at 15. That's a couple of tremendous efforts by the Vikings, but they could not get themselves back in the point. Kling will continue on serve. Now the Vikings will tend to the floor. Uh, but Mike, it looks to me, as, as you watch Grayson Kling, he, he's pretty relaxed, and I think he just seems to have a good sense about him of, of how to deal with this time when they're maybe trying to cool him off a bit. But he seems utterly relaxed. Crowd getting into it. Wow. Mike with the pass. And the point going to belong to Long Beach. Did you see what the call was there, Michael? Did he step on the line? I believe he did. That looks to me like it's about the only thing it could be. No, I, I think it was a line violation. Yeah. So that ends the run. Vikings go back out in front by one. Zavala will serve. Quick set to Weston. And Mike let that one go, I believe. And Zavala. Ends up laying out for it, but can't get it. Yeah, I'm not sure how much of a play Jeffrey Mike's got on that ball anyway. Perhaps thinking better of than trying the one-arm stab to maybe see if a teammate's there to uh, make a better dig, put them in a better spot. Tied at 16. Adamson. To Funga, right to Rocha. Mike off the block of McCraven, who punches it over. The Pirates will attack. Back to McCraven. Tafunga can't corral it. Orange Coast grabs the lead, 17-16. And again. That's a great job by Kling. Look at Kling on the back set. Unbelievable job. It was, first off, it's a great decision. Second of all, it's incredibly disguised. And Craven, McCraven just absolutely crushed. And again, McCraven played all of one set in the first two matchups between these two teams and had one total attack in the two matchups combined. So Long Beach getting their first look of any kind, really, against McRaven all season. Mike has that one sent back by Darius McRaven. Well, he is coming up big. And picking a heck of a time to do it. Timeout on the floor. 18-16, Orange Coast out in front in set number three, trying to close out a championship here in the 3C2A.
McRaven now up to five kills. And I'll tell you, that, that number to me, I, I would have expected even to be a little bit higher. Uh, but a couple of blocks as well, and a big part, of course, of the total team blocks. Orange Coast now up to eight as a team leading far and away in that stat. And, uh, Mike, it goes back to something we talked about at the top, and Orange Coast right now uh, imposing that size and athleticism as they've done to opponents all season long. Yeah, the, the descriptive word from Coach Travis Turner. Another of, roof, this one from Weston and Anderson. Of Darius McCraven, as we see Anderson get in on the act, was uh, the kid's an absolute monster. They got a bunch of monsters up front here for OCC. They are six points away from the 2022 crown. And they have all the momentum, and Long Beach out of timeouts. And now it's Mike, who partially fans on it. Trying to handle the serve of Adamson. The Pirates are rolling. And, uh, Mike, right now, uh, there's not much of anything that Jonathan Charette can do on the sideline. The floodgates are open, and the Vikings drowning in this one in set three. Orange Coast trying to make a heck of a statement here. They can not only bring the championship home, but do it in straight sets against a Viking team that has lost twice all year. Serve wide, 20-17. to 17. Jonathan Worden on for Long Beach. Got a very tough serve to deal with. Watch this one come over. First appearance tonight for Worden. Vikings looking for a run off the tape, but Vetter is there. They go to McCraven, blocked, but McCraven keeps it alive. They'll try Anderson. Anderson off the block. Zavala able to dig it out. Looking for Mike, who arcs it for the far side. Vetter there. Weston in the middle, gets it down. Rocha can't quite get there. The run continues. The Pirate lead is four. A little help from the tape. Yeah, the, the tape throws off the timing for the receiving player for Long Beach City. And the Rocha, no chance. Weston now with four kills. He's been typically efficient, hitting percentage at 500. 21-17, high arcer. No miscommunication. Rocha has to set it back. Hernandez has it sent back. Vikings are still there. Off the antenna for Hernandez. The point to the Pirates, 22-17. Another big run late for the Pirates. That continues to be a storyline. Maybe the storyline. Manning Lemoyne on to serve for the Pirates. Creeping ever closer. To Funga. They look for Hernandez from five feet back. Good anticipation. Kling, they go to McCraven. McCraven inside the line. Hammers it home. Orange Coast now leading it 23-17. Well, Mike. Uh, if the Pirates can close out in short order here, this is going to feel a little more like a coronation, the way that they are finishing this off. I think you're exactly right. This has been impressive. Uh, to my memory, I believe this is an 8-1 to one run for Orange Coast. I believe you're right. Led it 16-15, I believe. And maybe I, they might have even led it 17-15, though. I'm not sure about that. But it's been a big run late. For Orange Coast, at least 8-1 to one with Lemoyne on serve. The Pirates two points away. Zavala, a little trouble. Mike. That one sent back. Another block for the Pirates. The front line defense has been outstanding. We're craving again. Championship point for the Pirates. 24-17. Their last championship came in 2017. It's not an overstatement to say that they're here every year. Trying to get back to the top of the mountain. One-timer, the joust ball. Anderson can't keep it alive. The Vikings still in it. Watch here as they battle. And it's Win that wins the battle against Anderson. 24-18.
Sean Wynn. Trying to keep the Vikings in it. Fitting that it's Anderson. No, sent back. Will they try Anderson again? Fitting if it's One more time. Anderson, that one's blocked. Prowse. Well, they tried to go to their horse to finish it off, and I think the Vikings anticipating that it was going back that way, and Prowse with the roof. I expect the decision to be made probably next time to McRaven. Yeah, do they mix it up? Still a championship point at 24-19. And Prouse, as the pass sent over the net, one times it. 24-20. And a quick timeout. Travis Turner going to take a timeout, talk to his team, Orange Coast on the precipice here in set three on SoCalCollegeSports.com. On serve. They'll try McCraven. McCraven sent it long. Man. Well, I'll tell you what, no quitting the Vikings, and not that you would have expected it at any level, but they are fighting. Four straight. 24 21, but still a ways to go. They need three more. Win. Anderson. They'll go to Anderson on the give and go. Tafunga keeps it alive. Prouse off the block. Might have been a net violation in there as well. But either way, let's watch here. The set was a little bit in front of him. That's just a great adjustment by Prouse. Not going to be able to take the full swing at it. Meanwhile, Diddy taking a little extra time for the Pirates. Shaking off that left angle, a left ankle. It was a little awkward. Watch here as the set comes from the back row, and Prowse, really his only play, just pushes it into the block. That's a heady play. 24-22. Hold everything. Win will serve. Kling. They'll try McCraven. McCraven off the block, and the Pirates. Took some doing, but they finish it out. They're back on top in the 3C2A. They're the 2022 men's volleyball champions. You suspected it would be McCraven at the end. They kept on trying to feed Will Anderson, the horse. But they go to the bullpen and the closer, Darius McRaven. Jeff, you and I had a conversation with Coach Turner prior to this game, an hour before. And he said he was very explicit uh, in his usage tonight of McRaven. And McRaven delivers in a big way. Yeah, I mean, this is a team, it goes back to something interestingly, Mike, that Ryan Windish, uh, the head coach at Irvine Valley, said to me when I talked about how do you get ready for a guy like Will Anderson. You see Anderson uh, among the leaders in so many different categories, and you can easily kind of uh, get lost uh, in what Will Anderson can do. And Ryan Windish said, you know, hold everything here because uh, sometimes that's a little misleading because it speaks to how efficient and how effective Will Anderson is. But it doesn't mean that that's the guy they go to every time and that they have other guys who can definitely do the job. You saw that all season long with a guy like Cash Adamson who was uh, great alongside 
uh, Will Anderson for this Pirate team. And then, of course, as you're talking about, they get a guy like Darius McCraven who comes along, uh, just gets better and better as this year goes on, and now becomes uh, yet another weapon for this team that's so deep, uh, front and back. Incredible job by everyone, both teams, but man, just, an, just a wow performance from McCraven. Anderson, very good in this one as well. You know, Mike, I want to say one other thing too, as, as we have the scoreline up there, and you note that this was in straight sets, uh, but three close sets as you would expect, but uh, you know, Mike, don't, don't let the 3-0 fool you. This was high drama. And, you know, the Vikings were uh, very much in this, uh, really, the whole way up till the end when they almost pulled off uh, an incredibly improbable comeback, uh, making a late run to try and get themselves back in as we bring you back. I believe this is Championship the point that clinched it, and you watch there. It's just, See it from a couple just angles. the power of McRaven as – it's just a ball. It's going to be so difficult to dig out of there. It was Wynn that uh, got an arm on it. But uh, this is a, a tremendous job. They're in system, clearly. Uh, the timing is working here. The lane is there, and the swing from McRaven. Uh, and there's not much that uh, anybody's going to be able to do in that situation. Say here one more time that what a fight at the end from Long Beach, but it comes up short. As you see that coffin nail from McCraven to close things out for the Pirates here in 2022. We await the award ceremony. Jeff will take a break here. We'll come back with either Will Anderson or McCraven. Stay with us.
standing by for tournament MVP, Will Anderson and Dearis McCraven. Who closed things out versus Long Beach City in the final of 2022. Women's Volleyball Champion in the 3C2A. Orange Coast. Stay tuned, everybody. are joined by Darius McCraven and uh, Darius uh, congratulations uh, thank you thank you three uh, three straight sets but yeah. that was no easy task tonight uh -huh. you'd seen them twice before mm -hmm. but uh, even in straight sets uh, yeah. they're incredibly tough mm -hmm. yeah they're they're a really good team um, very very scrappy you know they'll they'll get any ball that we throw at them uh, we just had to you know keep being aggressive um, our service did a really good job in putting pace on the ball and uh, getting them out of system which makes it really easy for the front row to get some blocks and set up so um, a really good job from Long Beach, but I'm um, really glad we were able to pull through. At the very end, mm -hmm. it was interesting. You guys yeah. went on a great run. You were so very good late in sets. That mm -hmm. really seemed to be the difference tonight. And you went on another great run, and you're right there. You're one point away. Mm -hmm. And it looked like they tried to go a couple of times mm -hmm. uh, to Will Anderson to, yeah. to go to the big guy and, and, and have him finish it out for you. Yeah. Um, the Vikings responded a couple of times, got a couple of points. Then they called your name, or it looked mm. like they ran it towards you. Can you talk about what you were feeling, what you were thinking at that moment when uh, the big point was coming and uh, you knew the ball was coming your way? Yeah, I mean, like when getting that uh, game-winning uh, point, um, it's just a lot of pressure. But um, I try to, you know, keep myself calm and try to stay cool. Um, that first swing, it did go out, and I, I knew I had to just, you know, readjust and just stay calm. And, and that next uh, swing, it was able to just go right where I wanted to. And um, just a really great set from Grayson as well. Um, and, you know, yeah, just a really good uh, team overall here. And we, we did a really good job at, um, you know, even though we were down a lot in that and we gave a lot of points right at the end, um, I was glad we were able to finally pull it through and I finally, you know, get that final point. Now, Dearis, uh you were uh, a bit of a horse yourself mm -hmm. tonight. Uh, when they set you, you delivered. And uh, what's, what's the challenge coming in? Obviously, the matchup. Uh, that we had at the, at the top of the hour or at the top of the broadcast was uh, Will Anderson versus uh, Julian Zavala. Mm -hmm. I think early on they were trying to go back and forth to each other, especially from the service line, but it was mm -hmm. really you who shut down Zavala, mm -hmm. uh, particularly in the blocking game. Can you talk about when you see the 24 kills, 
from him on Thursday. What are you thinking for in terms of your preparation for that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, before uh, tonight, we really talked about, you know, where they're going to swing and their tendencies. Yeah. Um, and so that my coach told me to just um, set up really wide and then block inside. And uh, knowing that they like to swing inside a lot, um, we would just want to take away that option. And, uh, it, and it worked really well. Um, and even on uh, the outside as well, Will and uh, Cash were blocking really good too, as well as Zach and uh, Diddy. But, um, yeah, we just uh, we were ready for what they were going to throw at us tonight. And uh, I'm glad I was able to work. It's an interesting storyline that we talked about a couple of times. If you go back and look at the results mm -hmm. this season, the two matchups, uh, you didn't really get uh, much opportunity mm -hmm. uh, early on in this season. In fact, uh, it was just one set, I believe, uh, mm -hmm. one appearance in the two matches yeah. uh, combined. You talk mm -hmm. a little bit about the, the path, the journey this season, mm -hmm. because it seems you started at one place, but now at the end of the year, you seem to kind of really be shoulder to shoulder mm -hmm. and a guy that they're really bringing right alongside. Yeah. Uh, talk a little bit about what that journey was like. Um, well, very early on in the season, um, you know, I, I was a bit of a, a delinquent, I guess you would say. Um, I had a hard time, you know, uh, working hard and getting to practice on time and all that stuff. But, you know, I, I had a really good group of guys, and they really got me through it. And, um, you know, by the end of it, you know, I, I knew I had to kind of step up and be a little bit more responsible and, you know, show up every day and work hard every day. And, uh, and this is the outcome of it. So I'm, I'm really happy that I was able to flip that switch. That's all I got. Uh, yeah. Just one last question. So that yeah. really raises the question. It's like, so just a little bit about uh, this is a program uh, that's really a giant here mm -hmm. in the 3C2A in men's volleyball. Uh, Travis Turner, uh, a guy who's had so much success. And you talk a little bit about that culture and what that was like when you first got here and, mm -hmm. and, and what ultimately you'll take away from the experience of, of being part of a program like this that has so much success year after year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, th this program, it, it will bring you to your knees. You know, coach will work you until you cannot move anymore. And, but, you know, it, it's all a test. He's really testing you and seeing if you're going to stick through with it, if you're going to trust the process and just keep going. And, um, again, with this a great group of guys, you know, it made it really easy to just keep coming every day and, and you know, being able to spend time with them and uh, just working hard with them. Um, and this culture is just, it's, it's just hard work. You know, hard work pays off. And at the end of the day, you know, it's going to be, it's going to come down to who's going to, who worked harder, who worked harder building up to this day. Um, who was ready mentally as well as physically. And um, I think we were just the championship team tonight. I also yeah. heard that you're the uh, the ringer in the three-on-three -three basketball tournament. Oh, yeah. That they do. So gonna, you, go, you go for the double here. You can try and win the championship in volleyball <laughs> and then, then bring it home in basketball too. Yeah, hopefully if you run it again, I'm trying to win it again. All right. Yeah. And we're joined by Will Anderson. Uh, uh, Will, congratulations. Um, talked a little bit with uh, Darius about, about Long Beach, and they came in. Uh, you knew they would be tough. They hung around tonight, but uh, you guys got it done in straight sets. Talk a little bit about the differences tonight, anything that you were able to shake up and do differently uh, that accounted for getting it done a little bit quicker. Uh, I think we just came in, you know, and we were ready to go from the start. We had our confidence in ourselves, so when we were down, we were never, we were never really worried, you know. We just knew that they were going to get their runs, we were going to get our runs, and so we just kept fighting for every single point, and we came in wanting to do it in three, and we did it in three. You know, statistically, you look, at, and you know, you're a leader on this team, and we can go on with the stats and, and where you are among the leaders uh, all the time. But uh, talk a little bit about the role, because this is a team uh, right from the guy sitting right next to you on down the, down yeah. the list with a lot of talent on it. And how do you approach uh, early on in matches? Uh, how do you approach your role on this team when you know that they count on you a lot, but also you know you got a lot of talent around you as well? I mean, that's the great thing about it is I got a, ta a lot of talent around me, so, you know, they don't, they don't always know what's going to come to me, you know. It opens it up for me to help me get better, and, you know, I, it takes a lot of pressure off me as well because I know if I'm not having the best game, we still got three, four, five, six boys behind me that can get it done. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, one last question uh, for you. We talked a little bit with uh, Darius about Travis Turner and, and going in this program, and, uh, you know, this is a great way. Uh, you know, to finish off the season. Uh, but can you talk a little bit about, you know, as you go on, both of you go on and you're, you're going to play more, uh, what you'll take away from the experience of, of the culture of being in this program that uh, is very demanding but also brings with it such a, such a degree of success? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's just a great program. I mean, I've loved every second of it that I've been here. And more than just becoming a great volleyball player, you know, he, he helps you become a better man in the process. And, you know, it, it is tough, but going through that with all these boys just brings you closer and closer and I mean we've come real close this year and you know 
We're real close, team. We love each other. <laughs> well, shows the way you guys get after it out there and uh, uh, support each other. It's been a lot of fun for us to cover it. Uh, uh, Darius McCraven, uh, Will Anderson, thanks so much for, uh, for joining us. Congratulations again, guys. We'll yeah, come back and wrap things you. up here from El Camino.